What is going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Hostility and today I'm coming at you guys with another overdue gaming PC build and I know I have not done one of these in a while so I apologize for that uh, if you are subscribed to me for these gaming PC build videos and I also apologize if I'm a little bit rusty. I've not done a commentary in a while but today we are doing a $2,000 gaming PC build and it's called the Skylake Strider and I've not done a Skylake build on this channel before so I guess I'm going to kick it off with the 6700K uh, well, I, technically I have. I've done my personal gaming PC build, so if you want to check that one out, that'll be in this, the description below, or, or on a card, somewhere on the screen if you want to check that out. Um, also, uh, the gameplay you are watching in the background is recorded on my new PC, and it looks so smooth and so fresh. It looks a lot better than it did before recording on my old PC, so hopefully you guys do enjoy the added uh, visual in the background. It looks so sexy. I mean, I wish I could record this at 2K, but I don't have a 2K monitor, so yeah. Uh, anyways, the name of this build is the Skylake Strider, and finally I've been giving names to my builds, but um, I've called it the Strider because it does things with ease, like anything you would throw at it, an ultra game at 2K, a, a video rendering project, like an hour's video render. I don't know, some, like any demanding task that you throw at it, this thing will be able to accomplish, so that therefore I've called it the Strider. So this PC is a $2,000 one, and it is aimed at those who love to game, at uh, 2K resolutions, uh, this get, this build will be able to play most uh, most games in 2K at uh, ultra settings, 144 hertz, whatever. And it's aimed at those who are also uh, producing videos or doing more intensive stuff like 3D rendering or Photoshop or stuff like that. Just really demanding programs. This build will be perfect for you guys, and it is a two thousand dollar budget, which, in my opinion, is a sweet spot. So, kicking it off with the processor. As I said, it is the i7 6700K, clocked at four gigahertz, and this thing, uh, from first hand experience, it's a beast. Like coming from an i3, oh, the the times, man. It's so fast, and like any i7 will just blow your mind if you're coming from a older processor or something that's not as capable and this thing is just able to crunch numbers and crunch through all those demanding tasks that you throw at it with ease and uh, obviously it's a little bit overkill if you're just doing purely gaming but um, if you are doing purely gaming I recommend you step down to an i5 but if you are taking advantage of all these extra threads using you know video editing and stuff like that video rendering converting whatever this thing will it's, it's just a beast um, so yeah, it's over, it's an unlocked processor as well, so it's overclockable and you can gain some extra performance through that. But otherwise, it is a beast of a processor and it is a awesome upgrade for those coming from a uh, older processor or if you're coming from an i3 or a Pentium or maybe even an i5. So yeah, um, definitely awesome choice. Going on to the CPU cooler, I've chosen the H110i GTX um, cooler, and this one's the 280mm radiator, uh, unlike the H100i, which is a 240mm, so you'll get definitely better some, uh, that absolutely made no sense, you'll get some better cooling performance, um, and it'll give you a lot of overclocking potential for the 6700K, and it's just an awesome CPU cooler, um, but one gripe that I have with it is that the fans that come with it are so loud, so uh, if you want a little bit of a quieter system, you definitely want to ch swap out the fans, but yeah. Um, also, it's your choice uh, to go with the H110i GT or the H110i GTX. Um, they just have a different look, and I think they have different fans, but apart from that, they're basically the same, and they'll give you the same performance, uh, so yeah. Um, great CPU cooler, and obviously you can go into custom water cooling if you want later on. The case will definitely allow it, and I'll get onto that a little bit later. Going onto the motherboard now, we are using the Asus Maximus 8 Hero VIII. Um, I'm not good with Roman numerals, but nevertheless, this, this, uh, this motherboard is so sexy, and it is really, really, it is a, it is a top notch motherboard. Um, it, is the, it is the top, it is one of the top of the line um, Z170 uh, ROG boards, so you'll definitely get a lot of features, some that you probably won't even need. Have very good overclocking uh, potential with this board as well because it is like the VRMs and stuff on this and like the control voltage control will be able to get you really good overclocks and not to mention like just it looks so nice you can change the LED colors as well to suit the theme of your build um, I've sort of gone for a red and black cliche theme in this build uh, but you can swap it out to whatever you like. Um, there's there's a lot of other great uh, RO, I mean, sorry, Z170 motherboards, but I've just chosen this one because I think, in my opinion, it's one of the best and will definitely 
be d awesome in this gaming PC build or this build in general. Going on to the memory, we are using 16 gigabytes of G Skill Rip Jaws 4 at 21. 33 and not to mention it is DDR4 as with Skylake DDR4 is a standard is standard I mean you can use DDR3 but not very many motherboards support it um, so yeah why not just make the change to DDR4 um, it'll give you a lot better performance and um, yeah 16 gigabytes it's enough to do uh, it's more than enough actually to do gaming because uh, most games don't really utilize a lot of memory unless you know some, there's some exceptions and it is uh, enough to be doing all your workstation all your intensive programs video editing stuff like that and uh, if you want in the future you can add in another kit and upgrade it to 32 gigabytes also it is at as it is clocked at 2133 you can overclock it but memory overclocking is quite hard so if you want to bump up the megahertz then you definitely can replace this if you are looking to build this pc but yeah 16 gigabytes of ram will definitely be enough for all those programs intensive programs and gaming Going on to the storage now, you guys guessed it, um, you guys already know what SSD I'm going to be putting in and obviously it's the 850 EVO 500GB from Samsung and like after experiencing an SSD first hand, they are so great, the boot, boot up times and loading times are just stupidly fast and 500GB is plenty of storage to uh, put on all of your OS, your games, your programs, uh, with room to spare. I mean, I mean unless, unless you have like t like 100 games or something, um, yeah, 500 gigabytes is more than enough. And if that, uh, if you want to put your junk on another drive, I've also included a Western Digital Caviar Green 3 terabyte drive. And I've chosen the green one because it is uh, a little bit more power efficient than a blue or a black. And it is also quieter than those because this spins at a lower speed. But if you are putting junk on this drive, you probably wouldn't want to access it at a uh, tremendously fast speed anyways. Uh, so yeah, you store all your photos, your music, your movies, and other stuff. I'm not going to judge you. Uh, but yeah, this this 3 terabytes is more than enough space. So you have your 500 gigabyte drive and your 3 terabyte drive. That is plenty of space um, for this build. Especially for your video production, you can put all your videos on the 3 terabyte drive. Going on to the video card now, we are going with the EVGA GeForce GTX 980 Ti 6GB Superclocked ACX 2.0 Plus Cooler uh, video card. And um, the 980 Ti's, they'll definitely give you awesome performance at 2K Ultra. It'll crush, absolutely just penetrate games at 1080p. Like, it'll rape games at 1080p. Excuse my sort of obliga obligatory terms there but it, that's there's no other way there's no other way to put it like this game will be able to, I mean sorry this graphics card is enough to handle most games 2k ultra and yeah it'll absolutely crush 1080p and all those CUDA cores and stuff that'll be good for video editing and also recording if you do that um, you'll be able to use the graphics card to take some of the load off the CPU and uh, with six gigabytes of VRAM, uh, you that, that's plenty for uh, today's video games. Um, and yeah, don't really need a Titan X, but you can obviously upgrade to one in the future if you want, or even go two-way SLI. Um, and also, not to mention the uh, ACX 2.0 cooler um, that'll do a great job of cooling your GPU. And also, it is superclocked, so it does come factory overclocked, and you can even push it further if you'd like to get some to squeeze out some extra performance out of that card. Um, so yeah, great card. Going on to the case, we are going with the Corsair 750D uh, full tower case. And now I have a 450D and it looks absolutely sexy as hell. Um, these are my favorite cases and um, obviously you could go with another brand like cases aren't too limited but I prefer the 750D. Um, it is a little bit bigger than the 450D because it is a full tower case so that means you're just going to have more room to fit in stuff like extra hard drives, um, even a custom water cooling loop, you'll have a lot of room to do that, room for radiators, and uh, yeah, this this case just absolutely looks really, really good and it has a lot of functionality. It looks really sophisticated and modern, and that's what I like in this PC case, like it, it just fits with the theme so well. Um, I don't know, that's up to you, cases is all for looks basically, so yeah, choose what you want uh, if you are planning to build this PC. Now. Uh, lastly, the power supply, we're going with the EVGA G2 Supernova 750 watt 80 plus gold certified fully modular power supply and I have one of these in my system um, and I'll just tell you, like it's a great tier 1 power supply at a reasonable price and um, you know, 
uh, I've recommended a lot of really crappy power supplies in my builds. Um, like I just really regret that because um, here's a power supply that is a tier one and it is a really good price. So you, I mean, what more can you ask? It is fully modular and the cables are fully black, so it does look stealthy. And you can obviously um, make your own cables if you want to make it that much better. But um, yeah, this this power supply will definitely be enough to power everything along with overclocking both CPU and graphics card. Even do two-way SLI, I don't know, probably pushing it there, but you know, obviously step up to the 1000 watt uh, version if you wish. But yeah, great power supply for the price. Now, the total comes to, oh, I'm not sure because I'm in New Zealand at the moment, but it, I'm pretty sure it's around 1980 something in the US, uh, and it's a great build. So yeah, there you guys have it, the $2,000 Skylake Strider, and hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, it's been a while since I've done a gaming PC bit, uh, video like I said, and also if you guys want something a little bit uh, lower in price, I'm doing a $1,000 Skylake uh, build featuring the 6600K i5, so if you guys are looking forward to that, stay tuned and also subscribe and leave in the comments below. Uh, any feedback or any suggestions that you have about these gaming PC videos and any uh, parts or I mean uh, any budget suggestions that you want me to do please leave them in the description or the uh, not the description the um, the comments below if you if you are looking at the description though you will see a parts list for this PC along with the PC part picker link um, if you wish to check it out further uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the video guys. If you did enjoy, please be sure to smack that like button and also subscribe for, uh, for more content like this. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out everybody.